Yeah, we're talking about the 10 things we don't like about camping. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? It's the 10 things we don't like. Yes. What about the 150 things we do like? Oh, there's a lot, but <laughs> those aren't nearly as fun to dwell on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we are. Two Wheels Big Life. I'm Rich. This is my lovely bride, Chris. And we are here to tell you about the 10 things that we hate about full-time tent camping. Why hate? I don't like the word hate. Okay, the 10 things that we kind of dislike on a really large scale. Yes, okay, <laughs> that's better. But before we go any further, before our comments get blown up of, well, if you hate it so much, why are you doing it? I really just want to quickly say we absolutely love it. However, we get a lot of comments from a lot of people, husband and wife, sometimes wife and husband, in that that's something that they want to do and they're excited to do it. And I sometimes feel like, and maybe we can even do it as well, but you look at the YouTube that channels that are out there and you look at the Instagram wonderful photos and it's you think it's all, all... rainbows and unicorns baby <laughs> and so <we're, laughs> we want this video to be an education to those of you who are going to go out and leave your lovely sticks and bricks houses and understand that there's a lot of difficulty in this life e even if you're going out for a short term two weeks three weeks four weeks you know there's still you're still camping you're still <laughs> going to have these things that are going to be inconvenient yes. you're going to be inconvenient all right, so let's get into it. Well, number one. Dirt. What is it? What is it, babe? <laughs> number one is dirt. So you go to Google because nobody has, you know, uh, Britannica, whatever those things were. <laughs> the Encyclopedia of <laughs> Britannica? Encyclop yeah. You're dating <laughs> so, yourself, babe. I am. That's okay. So you go to Google and Google's definition of dirt is a substance that soils something or someone. And that's basically dirt because dirt. it'll get all over everything in the form of dirt, dust, grit, sand, mud. I mean, it just covers everything. Well, mud's just wet dirt. I, I know, but it's still getting into everything. It does. It gets <laughs> into everything and it gets, you'll find it weeks later in places. <laughs> you just have to understand on the road, you are probably not going to stay as clean as you would living in your house. Our solution to the dirt problem that we have is that we got a, we put a tarp down that's larger than the base of our tent so it gave us a, it gave us a little bit of a of a of a stoop to go into and we also have a little um very lightweight woven yeah. doormats something to wipe our feet on before we go in the tent number two is the lack of a constant water supply yes we, one of the things we always look for when we are scoping out a potential campsite is the accessibility of water because we can't carry that much with us. So we want to make sure that if it is a, some type of campground, that it has potable water that's usually right. with a hand pump. The hand pump or the little faucets that are scattered throughout. Yes. Right. Or if we're out boondocking, that mm -hmm. there is a river or a stream in close proximity so that mm -hmm. we can go fill up what we need to do without having to trek for miles correct or the third one is having to if there's nothing close by and that's kind of our worst case scenario where Richard has to take the blue jug on my bike and he More has boost, to yeah. and go get it and yeah. go get the water yeah and, and so the solution to that what we have found that works best for us is as soon as we get to a campsite the first thing we do is we find water make sure we have that water and we immediately fill that blue jug up if it's potable water, we fill the blue jug up and work with that. Fill up the solar shower, work with that. If it's not potable water, we'll fill the blue jug up, but then filter all the water and get us plenty of water for drinking, plenty of water for coffee. But that's the first thing we do is we get to that water supply and we stock up on the water that we're gonna need for a few days. Number three, one of my nemesis is washing dishes. You just gotta do it. And so mainly you have to make sure, again, you're back to that water source. You have enough water that you can adequately wash and rinse your dishes off. So what I will do is a lot of times heat the water up on the stove, pour it into our, our sink, wash the dishes and move on. So either that or we have um, sanitizing tablets. We have we sanitizing tablets that we use in the water for the, in the rinse water that we use. Yeah. 
So there's really no solution other to that other than you do know that the, you're going to have to address somehow washing your dishes. Number four was showers. Gone are the days of just getting up, walking into your bathroom, flipping the switch, and 30, turning it to hot. 30 minute showers. <laughs> Taking a 30 minute shower. And also gone are the days of getting out of the shower, wrapping a towel around your waist, and wandering around. Let's say you're in a campground. This is how you dress up to go take a shower. This is how you dress up to take a shower. So that's if you're in a campground that you have a steady uh, su supply of water. So if you are boondocking, like we do a lot of times, you have to fill up your solar shower. Yep. You have to place it in the sun, and you hope that there is a sunny day and it's not cloudy, and you kind of have to monitor it. Okay, so how long has it been? It's been an hour. And what's the temperature? Till it gets nice and, and warm enough that you can go and hang it onto a tree and take a shower. This is some of, of a compromise that you have to, yes. that you'll have when you're out hitting these adventures. And in this case, it's okay, we got a pack to go get, get to a shower if we're blessed to have one in a campground, mm -hmm. or... Okay, let me try that again. We're gonna shower together. <laughs> in a stockade. I've never showered in a stockade before. This ought to be fun. This is what you do when you're living in dirt. No filming. Bye-bye. <laughs> yes. Or the other solution is we just don't shower for a couple days. Been there, done that. <laughs> Wouldn't recommend it. It's all good. Number five is what, honey? Laundry. You can't get away from it, especially if you're traveling with a limited amount of clothes. Um, yeah. If you've watched our, you know, can we bring all that video, I think is where we go over the amount of clothes that we pack. We don't have a lot of clothes, and so we try to extend the wear of these clothes as long as we possibly can, and and then you have to find a laundry. I have what been... Do, what do we have? Five, six days? Yes. Five, six days worth of clothes at max. Yeah. And that's kind of more than what some people have. Sometimes I have done laundry in what I call our kitchen sink if I just need to do a quick load and I will wash that. And a whole it. load or just <laughs> your unmentionables? Just my unmentionables if I'm running low. That's what you'll do. Sometimes if we're in a campground, we will find out that they have a laundry um, building on site and that's a blessing. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we have to throw everything into the trailer and lug it over to a laundromat. In, in a certain degree, that is kind of nice because you get everything done at once. Like 45 minutes, you're done. The, the flip side of that though is your, every laundromat is different. So the minute you walk in, you're scoping it out. First of all, where's the row of washers? What types of washers do they have? The big, Are they working? The little? Yeah. How yeah. about that? Are they working? <laughs> yeah. who's, who's in the laundromat? <laughs> oh yeah. What kind of card deal do they have where you got to buy a card and spend an extra buck and a half to get a card to fill yes. it up with money and blah blah blah. Laundry day is an it's adventure. An, yeah, it's an adventure day. <laughs> yes. yes. So forewarned is forearmed. You're not going to get around it. You're good, just going to have to do it. Number six. Gro Number six is groceries. Yes it is. Isn't that your most favorite thing to do? <laughs> All right, quick pit stop into Walmart, packing up for groceries again, and then... Because that's what we do every three days. <laughs> I know, and I hate grocery... I, I can't say that. Grocery shopping is one of my least favorite things to do, and now we do it like three times a week. <laughs> No, it is not my most favorite thing to do. When we I, was, had... I was lucky. Little sidebar here, guys. I was lucky to marry a woman that doesn't like to shop. No, I do not. <laughs> she does not like to shop. Well, and now they have curbside service where you don't even have to go in. This is true. It has gotten a lot easier. <laughs> but because our Yeti cooler only holds about three days worth of food. I think four is max. Yes. So we are dependent on going to a grocery store about every three to four days. And just like the laundromat, you're walking into the grocery store and you don't know where everything is. So you have to wander every single aisle. So yeah, grocery store every three to four days. I know you're looking forward to it. Number seven, sleeping on the ground. That is one thing that has been kind of difficult is sleeping on the ground. We started out in this adventure with an air mattress and we quickly found out that if I move or even Chris moves at that point, if she moves, it just causes so much mm -hmm. 
it, it upends the other person so much that we found that cots are better. But those cots are only about this far off the ground. They're only four or five inches off the ground. So they're, it's still like sleeping on the ground. Yes. But I, I was comfortable with them. Yeah, I mean, you get used to it. I mean, it's certainly not a Tempur-Pedic bed. No, no, <laughs> it's not. But you are out in the wilderness and it is nice to be off the ground and not sleeping on the hard rocks and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Number eight, number eight of things that really got to us while we, while we have been on the road is the amount of cold. What did you get down to last night? Oh. 27. It's all unicorns and rainbows here. <laughs> Just a little chilly this morning with the rain and the 34 degrees. Look out, she's undressing for you. <laughs> okay, so one, two, from my motorcycle jacket five and then this jacket it was amazing we didn't i didn't bring any heated gear or uh, a heated uh, a small heater for inside the tent because we were traveling in the summer now i was raised in arizona spent a lot of my time in new mexico and texas so when summer comes you're hot you're warm <laughs> well when summer's in 10,000 foot elevation, it gets to 30 degrees at night, even in August. Yeah. So that was something that was not, we were not prepared for is just how cold it is. And the solution we have for that, we had for that is that we, we got decent sleeping bags for, for sleeping at night. We um, borrowed a heater. Um, we ended up sleeping with extra clothes on, you know, inside the sleeping bag just to get us through along with our blankets and yeah. whatnot. But in but our solution for our solution for our next our next adventure is that we will have a heater. If you have watched any of our previous videos, know we headed out with what we had. Yeah, that and, was a big thing. And we did not have the proper gear, and so we're now educating ourselves and hopefully you on the proper gear. We're looking into maybe some wool base layers, um, mm -hmm. just some other things. Again, you're restricted to the amount of stuff that you can bring. Just know, even if you're traveling on the summer and there is a high probability you're going to run into some sort of cold weather. So make sure that you are somewhat prepared for that instead of huddling around a little tiny heater, <laughs> little tiny heater, little tiny milk house heater. <laughs> All right. Number nine, the nine, number nine is the lack of internet. As you guys know, we are doing this YouTube channel. We need internet, we need upload speeds, we need download speeds. I chose Verizon because of their coverage. They had a lot of, uh, the most coverage areas. And if you look at their map, their map shows red all over the West, all over Colorado. Well, that's fine, but not if you're down inside of a canyon. But also no cell service here. <laughs> Richard's been cut off. A lot of times we found out that we're down inside of this little canyon. We have zero cell service, but literally if I go up 150 feet up the side of that cliff on, on there, bam, I got full 4G LTE service. Oh, and our solution for this is this next season, we're probably going to have some type of a booster mm -hmm. where it's not just boosting Wi-Fi signal, it's going to be boosting the internet it's going to be bo boosting the cell service the service that we have and it's going to be compressing it and boosting it the 10 number 10 of the things that we disliked about this camping this summer and it was searching for campsites this year 2020 we all know the crazy that's been going on and virtually the entire population of the United States is camping this year. <laughs> with us. With us. So it's been very challenging finding not only dispersed spots, but clean dispersed spots, or finding campsites that have availability. Most of the campsites in the national parks, the state parks, were 100% full all the time. We just ch chose to travel on a Sunday and a Wednesday, or a Wednesday, because Sunday everybody was leaving and there'd be open sites available. 
Wednesday, nobody was there or the, the, the weekend crowd hasn't come in yet so we can go in on Wednesday and get a first come serve. And that seemed to have worked rather well. And I think along those lines too, the most in that category, the, the most challenging one for me is getting up in the morning and not knowing where we were gonna set up camp. And um, because of the motorcycles that we travel on, which are more conducive to road than off-road, I think it's easier to find a um, campsite, a dispersed campsite, if you are traveling on an adventure motorcycle. Yes. This underlying anxiety of, well, where are we going to camp? Where, how are we going to Where's find our home going to be next? Yeah, where's our next home? And look, with our tent, our tent was very large, you know, so it was a base camp. It's not something you just pop up and pop down that, you know, pull in at eight o'clock at night, pop it up, crash, get up at six and leave. Mm -hmm. It was a two hour process up and down and it, sometimes it longer, especially if it was wet or something. So, yes. but those are the 10 things that we hate. Dislike somewhat largely. <laughs> dislike a lot about camping. But overall, we we didn't tell you, we, we've got a list of 150 things that we love about camping. But we think that you would learn more by understanding the things that, uh, yes. the challenges that you might face out there on your next great motorcycle adventure. Yes. To recap, just be prepared to adapt. You're not going to be doing something and it's going to be consistent like at your sticks and bricks. Your, your toothbrush isn't always going to be in the same spot. You're not always going to have the right power supply or your battery charged up all the time. You may have to go plug it in somewhere. So you just have to be patient and you need to be able to adapt. Flexible. You have, be flexible. You have to be, be very flexible. flexible. Adapt, overcome, conquer. All right, till next time, y'all ride safe. Keep the shiny side up. <laughs>